Yeah, I'll st we started the presentation with this video that we made actually for the event of 8th of March for the demonstration that we planned here in Berlin. We tried to somehow, not sum up, but try to show uh, some moments of the movements and uh, everything that was going on in the last 43 years in order to first highlight the importance of the revolution that is happening in Iran, but also in order to highlight the importance of the um, resistance movements that has been going on in the last 44 years. That's why it's important to understand today's moment also as a part of, as a moment in this path of resistance. So the, what is happening, the revolution that is happening right now in Iran is not a one moment in the history, but it's being based and being grown on the roots that have been growing for 44 years. So what we observed in the last months that happened, um, that started also through the event of the, um, of the murder of Gina Mahsa Amini in Iran, um, we observed this uprising, which now we call also revolution. Um, as some, might, some of you might know, um, this revolution also started in Kurdistan, um, where the slogan Jenjian Azadi is also coming from. So it started with women in the grave graveyard of Jina Amini uh, taking off their headscarf saying Jenjian Azadi. What is important in this slogan is also that it's not just about, of course it started with the murder of Jina Amini as a state femicide, as a way that a uh, woman was killed by the state, but it wasn't and it is not just limited to, um, to hijab, even though it's being represented as such in the media. But it's more importantly about the right to self-determination, about Jen Jian as a life, as a uh, life with dignity and a life with, self, with the right to self-determine for everyone. Um, as the incident started, or as the uprising started on 16th of September in Iran, um, in the first couple of days we observed that these protests were going on into different cities and different regions in Iran, from Kurdistan to Tehran to Baluchistan and to all the other cities. Um, so we as a people who are living in diaspora, and of course as a people mostly affected directly or indirectly from what the state has been done in the last 44 years and um, try to organize ourselves to also connect the struggle that is happening in Kurdistan and in Iran. So we started also um, uh, organizing and mobilizing ourselves but also other people in other countries. Also as some of you might know, there's a really, really big Iranian and Kurdish diaspora community in other countries because a lot of people had to flee, a lot of people had to migrate because of very different issues. And so our goal was to organize somehow transnationally with all these people in other different countries. So we started building our group that we also called Women Life Freedom Collective uh, that is based in Berlin. Um, we are a transnational queer feminist group and um, we will, now I will explain what we did so far, but basically what we wanted to do was to um, somehow connect the struggle of the, or centralize the voices of the people inside the country, but also connect ourselves to the struggle that is also affecting ourselves. And for that, we planned different things. Hi, my name is Elahe. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm also Button part of the. I'm also part of the collective. Um, who we are? Um, we are, as Sonas explained, after uh, death of Gina Amini. I think after a week or something, um, some individuals like us, we just came together and tried basically to collect all this empowerment that we all have individually together. Um, well, I think it was like, as Sona said, like it was the first purpose was basically clear why we are doing this. But I think on very personal and individual level, it was important to have the collective um, 
power how to overcome the collective trauma in diaspora. Um, we are individuals with very different stories, with different backgrounds, some artists, activists, um, very different background. And yeah, let's go to the... Um, so basically we had three different missions or principles that was and is still important. I should also say that these missions and principles are changing also in the time because the state of the revolution is also changing the whole time. So I think the political discourse going on with it is also the whole time moving and changing. And that's why that I think we need to constantly reflect on these principles and missions. But our, the first thing that uh, was important for us was, as I said, is to centralize, centralize the voices of the revolution inside the country. So we don't see ourselves as in any way as representative, representative but as the people who have this bridge between the country because of different reasons, but the, uh, in my opinion, most important reason, because of the language and because of the background that we share with the people who are experiencing the revolution on the street. So what was important for us is to centralize what is happening in, on the streets and the knowledge that is being produced on the street by the people who are practicing their agency with risking their lives on the street is a very important knowledge that, in my opinion, should be transferred also to all of the other movements and all of the other countries because it's the sense and the essence of the revolution and this is the knowledge that we need. So that was our first mission. And the second mis mission, which was even more important, was through doing that, we tried to resist the appropriation of right wings, neoliberal and racist, patriarchal um, uh, system or discourses about the revolution that is going on. I mean, at, in Germany, for example, um, from the beginning of Gino's revolution, the politic and especially the right wing neoliberal um, policy, politic was trying to instru instrumentalize what is happening in Iran in order to play it against the racialized community inside Europe, which is exactly the problem that we faced since a really long time and what was important for us was to mention that as a problem and say hey um, we see that as a collective struggle we don't see that uh, and we don't let you play us against each other because the the fight that is happening in Iran is the fight for the right to self-determination and it means that people with different backgrounds are going on the street and we don't let you use that against ourselves for your neoliberal um, context and discourses. And um, then the third thing was that in this whole media coverage going on um, about the revolution in Iran, one of the important things was that that the most of the voices of marginalized community, the community who experience actually the most oppression, like Kurdish people, like the people in um, Baluchistan who are still going on Fridays, every Fridays on the street, um, is being completely unseen. That as exactly like the voices of the strikers, the workers who have been on general strike for months since the beginning of the revolution, who are actually leading this whole revolution by their strikes. But how many articles we read about them? So one of the important, uh, important <laughs> points for us was also to highlight that voices that is being also purposely unseen by the politics and the media. So what, what we have done till now, um, probably you know, like uh, we organized the rally on uh, 22nd of October and it was about 100,000 people, which we are kind of proud of it. And it was the biggest rally for um, Iran after the last revolution in diaspora. That was the first thing. The, the second one is Research transfer all the produced knowledge from the inside of the country uh, to other areas. So let's explain that. And 
transnational building and alliance with other feminists and leftist organizations and groups. That's one of the things that is really important and it's really playing a very key role basically right now for us because empowerment is coming from all the groups and we need that knowledge, we need sharing, we need sharing the resources and um, that's really important. So, really? <laughs> okay, we're done basically. I can just I can just add the what we're doing right now. Uh, yeah, I can also add a bit about that. Uh, right now, we are we are actually action oriented, basically collective. We try right now at the moment to basically focus on creating the discourses or democratic discourses for the future for Iran, for the future of marginalized communities, and this is what we are trying now to focus. You want to add something? No, I just wanted to, like, I just, maybe I'll just, like, repeat what you said and saying that, so, um, after, like, now this couple of months, I think right, what we are doing right now is that, especially in the last month, last weeks, as we saw also that the right wing's takes on the Iran's revolution by, like, inviting the son of the last um, king to the uh, Munich conference and to give platforms to right wings, um, right wings um, politicians, let's say, or oppositional groups. What we're trying to right now is also um, creating and changing and shifting the discourses. So what we're trying right now is also to say our revolution is not, and I'm saying our because I'm, I don't because I think our struggle as a people who are living outside the country is also connected to the people who are inside. Of course, not the same way, but it is still a connected struggle. And I think important is to say that our revolution is not to just overcome the right now's regime is to change the whole system of oppression and this system of oppression and a revolution in itself means also changing the dynamics of power and that is what we are trying to do and what we are trying to say is that it's not that we don't want the Islamic Republic, we know what we want and we know that Jean Azadi also means we all deserve a life with dignity, we all deserve a life with without any class oppression, we all deserve a life with um, economical justice and these are all the values for them people are being on the street and risking their lives. So, we're not going to let also people here and the politics in the Western society to instrumentalize that for their own emissions and also to sell the shine democracy as a democracy. So what we're thinking right now about or what we're trying to also create is to somehow create new discourses about radical democracy in which not only citizens or not only the group of already privileged people will enjoy the um, privilege of living in a democracy, but we want and need a democracy that comes from within, that comes from down to up, and it's from the people, and it will be decided by the people, and decided by the people who, are, who, who have been for a really, for centuries oppressed. Thank you.